chapter 2, I think it is, that wicked hands crucified Jesus, or slain. The lamb was slain, not sacrificed. All these things are, have a meaning that is a sort of unfolding of our awareness that we are not flesh and blood. You are a spiritual identity with a spiritual body with a spiritual way to walk on or walk in and in the way of righteousness eh, there is life and there is no death. Let me tell you there is no death. How do I know? Because Jesus came to us as a beginning with a child that was born of Mary and Joseph. But then, of course, Jesus began to say, call no man your father and your mother or your mother. In Hebrews 7, it tells us, it says here, in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge. To lay hold upon the hope that was set before us, which hope we have as an anchor to the soul, which you and steadfast, and which enters into that within the veil. Now we know also by various scriptures that the veil was rent, when Jesus rose from the dead. The veil of darkness, the veil of the shadow of death, the feeling, the belief that we are temporal beings, that we are born on a certain date, in a certain day, and you see it everywhere you go. You know, you've got cemeteries that remember the dead, whatever. But they had their birthday, and if you've got a birthday, you have a death day. Think about it, because you have considered that your life started when you were born out of your mother's womb. So it was a big rebuke to give to, you know, Jesus spoke, speaking to the Virgin Mary and said, what have I got to do with you? I'm about my father's business. Oh, how can you say that? Well, something had to come. A revelation had to come that is so far higher and more wonderful because Jesus came to reveal your true divinity. You are not a human being. Jesus came to reveal a spiritual dimension, what he called heaven, or he called a body not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. See? And as long as we are concerned about this physical body in whatever you experience in it and you try to patch it up, you're barking up the wrong tree. Why? Because you don't have a physical body. There's only one body and that's the body of Christ. Are you hearing that? What does it mean, the body of Christ? Was it the body of Jesus? The man? No. The body of Christ is one body. We are all baptized by one spirit into that one body that has the revelation and the realization that I am spirit, not flesh and blood. And to them gave he power to become the son of God. Who were not born of flesh and blood. They were not born by a twinkling in somebody's eye, but they were born of God. We are born of God, beloved. You're not born of flesh and blood. But we put so much emphasis on, uh, well, on flesh and blood, on our relations with each other and family and friends, that we only can see us, you know, the way we think that they are. But, you know, that's why Philip said, show us the Father. Because he only could see a man, Jesus Although he done wonderful works, he only could still see Jesus only. And Jesus began to show 
many times on the Mount of Transfiguration that it was not Jesus that we should be seeking, a physical man, even a glorified man. You see, the glorification that took place was the glorification of the spiritual dimension or the divinity that every man is within himself. Now this is called the absolute truth. There are no human beings on the earth. God does not know anything about your human experience. He does not know anything about your heart beating or not beating or you live a function or not a function. He doesn't know anything about the, what I would call the, the material substance of the bodies of men and women and children. But we are being drawn out. That's why the Spirit was given. To draw us into the realm what Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a realm for you, a place for you, that where I am, that ye may be there also. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, oh yes, Lord, we believe in God. Then he said, believe also in me. What kind of me was he talking about? Was this me the man Jesus that was born or was the me the father? The father, yeah? But not the man, but you know, he said himself, of myself, I can do nothing. So that's the mystery of the two ways of I. I got some tapes on that. The two ways of I. I, as a human, has a dot on the top and lives in a brain set that governs his life by, well, by everything that he learns, you know. His brain, his brain, it's about three ounces of brain stuff, that gray matter that's in there and that somehow has developed a mechanism of survival through learning things, so eating the right food, to balance yourself out in various aspects, to keep your humanity going, your body going and everything well, you know, and sometimes it helps. But you know, I notice even sportsmen, you know, like, or sportswomen that have really been very great at one stage, if you see them 20 years later, they are no longer that look, you know, so you can tell you then, that nothing really works. But I know the only thing that works is your realization that you are not flesh and blood. And the Christ of God made manifest every one of you. Okay. So why do, you, why do we look at each other? Why do we look at even some holy person that's seems to be holy or I don't know no we must see each other the way we are known and then the veil is rent the moment I see you the way you are known of God the veil is rent and somehow for some strange and reason that I don't know how it works and I'm sure that no man has ever known the mystery of the workings of grace and truth when it comes to you by revelation. Especially when you all of a sudden see somebody the way they truly are. They don't see him anymore as a sinner or as a saint or something good or bad. No, you see that substance that was ordained of God to be the substance and the nature of the I that I am. I am the substance and the life and the constitution of all living. I am that. I am that. And so are you. Huh? So think about it. When we begin to praise God, what are we actually acknowledging? You are actually praising that realm or that that being, that I, that I am, you acknowledge that as the only activity and the only power and the only revelation that ever will be existing. Yeah, 
And it has to come through that. This is why we sang before in the book of Revelation that I saw a new heaven eh? and a new earth. And I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. What does that mean? Well, it's, of course, it, it's, well, it's symbolic language because the earth is not passing away. It's not going to be burned up by fire. So the earth represents our beliefs about our own constitution. The earth, what we think that we came out of. Yeah? And that's what a lot of people still believe, that we were actually formed out of the dust, or even our bodies were formed out of the dust of the ground. Well, your natural, what we call our natural body, is formed out of the dust of the human mind, out of the belief in two bodies, two powers, two gods, two whatever, all sorts of things. But I know in whom I believe, and I'm fully persuaded. There's only one God and Father of all, who is through you all and in you all and as you all. That's the body of Christ. They are the ecclesia. Jesus said to Peter, upon this revelation, oh, you are the Christ. Yes, Peter, so are you. Now you are the rock. Upon I will build my church, my body. Uh, and the gates of hell, or the powers of death, or the unseen working of the, I would call the carnal mind. Some people call it the mortal mind. What's the mind of flesh? And nothing of the human mind and its, concept, and its beliefs can ever enter into the realm of spirit. Yeah. It cannot find its inheritance in the genes or in the molecular structure of the body. Some people are looking for that, for immortality to take this physical become immortal. It's like a caterpillar wanting to be a, a, an immortal caterpillar. No man, we got to die. Jesus came to show us a way to die first. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God and out of heaven, prepared as a bride atoned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle, or the abiding place of God, is now with men. How? How did that happen? How could God again come to man and show him what he truly is? By first sending or coming himself in the likeness of sinful flesh, in the likeness of a belief that I'm born, in the likeness of a belief that I'm going to die one day. And in the meantime I try to preserve this thing as long as I possibly can. And then what? When are you going to be satisfied? Huh? when are you going to be satisfied in this human existence and I just saw on television that this, this couple they were retired and they, they won in the lottery 220 million dollars or something like that and I thought by myself what are you going to do with it okay. <laughs> what are you going to do with all that it's crazy, isn't it? Well, it, do, it can do good. I mean, you can send it into the mission fields and you can bring it to the starving children of Africa. You can do all these things. But you must realize that the... God doesn't know about that. Nobody ever died. And all God is interested in is to lift us out of the obscurity of the darkness. You know. For God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. To give us the light of the knowledge of God 
the knowledge of God. What's that knowledge that we can receive of the Father? What kind of knowledge is it? Well, Jesus said, My sheep will know my voice. 